Hi everybody, I am beginning a new uh, section for all of you to follow uh, based on the Psalms. I realize that the Psalms um, is one section of scripture that most of us here, especially during the Eucharist, we respond to it, your response will be and we respond to it. But I think we really don't understand it and the Psalms are extremely beautiful. I thought each Sunday perhaps, or maybe if I do get the time even during the week, to record one, uh, an explanation to one of the Psalms. And I thought I'd begin today with the one that we are most familiar with, and that is Psalm 23. I call it a Psalm for the living, not just the dead. And I say this because we hear this Psalm mostly when someone dies, we sing the Lord is my shepherd as the response. Really, I think it's a Psalm for the living. Now, if you were to describe God in one word, what would you call him? You see, David in the psalm called him a shepherd. But that also meant that David called himself a sheep. David had himself, as we know, been a keeper of sheep and understood both the needs of the sheep and the many cares of the shepherd. But David, as should we, in admitting that he was a sheep, also admitted the nature of the sheep and his own nature, namely, sheep are weak, sheep are defenseless, and like us, sheep, yes, are even rather foolish. You see, sheep are not brilliant creatures. Leave a sheep without a shepherd and he nibbles a bit of grass here, wanders over there for some more, sees a patch just past that rock and before you know it, the sheep is lost or even worse, has fallen into a ravine or then could be devoured by a wolf. So David opens the psalm with a noble tone of confidence. Listen to what he says. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. There is no if, nor but, nor even I hope the Lord is my shepherd, but he very confidently says the Lord is my shepherd. In doing so, he declares that he has cultivated a spirit of assured dependence upon his heavenly father. But he also follows this declaration of faith with another. I shall not want. The response I shall not want immediately puts us at odds with our culture in which we are conditioned to be consumers who always seem to lack something. If people lived by Psalm 23, lacking nothing because the Lord is their shepherd, our economy would collapse. So we look at the Hebrew text which is perhaps better translated as I shall lack nothing or I shall lack no good thing. Think about it. Our whole life is about wanting. I want, I shop, I look and when I have it, I want new stuff. So here is a question we need to ask ourselves. What do I lack? Well, perhaps I lack the latest iPhone or a great job and lots of creature comforts. I lack a beautiful house and I lack this and I lack that. We can fill in the blank endlessly. To live by Psalm 23 would mean ignoring the constant barrage of messages saying you are unhappy, you need more stuff. Psalm 23 resets, literally resets the consumer mentality. If we genuinely and in the marrow of our being believe that God is with us, then the only logical consequence would be to say, I shall not want. But Psalm 23 is much more than just a reset button on a consumer mentality. It reflects the confidence and the relationship that we share with God. Consider one four letter word in verse four, the word thou translated in the RSV as you, for you are with me. The second person pronoun thou is an old English, a relic literally from the King James Version written 1611. And here 
is, lies a very fascinating thought when we look at that word Tao. James Limburg points out that in the original Hebrew of Psalm 23, there are, and listen to this, there are exactly 26 words in the Hebrew text, not in the English text, exactly 26 words before and after thou art with me. 26 words, thou art with me, 26 words. Perhaps the poet was boldly declaring that God being with us, thou art with me, is at the very center of our lives and everything else is around it. Notice also that in the first three verses of the psalm, God is spoken of in the third person. The Lord is my shepherd, he leads me, he restores my soul. But once with the thou or you, which we find in verse 4, once we are done with that, the third person shifts to the second person. For thou art with me, thy rod, thou preparest a table. Instead of talking about God, the psalmist begins to talk of talk to God. He's not only talking about God, he begins to talk to God. Instead of God in the head, which was in the first part, God is now a friend in the heart. A conversation happens, a relationship grows, and this really is faith. This relationship does not guarantee the believer a world therefore free of all troubles. You see, being a Christian does not mean I'm insulated from attack. And the psalmist acknowledges a crisis that he is going through. In Psalm 23, the crisis is described, as we know, as the darkest valley. Though I walk through this darkest valley, he has to walk through it. The evil is real and the presence of my enemies has not been denied by the psalmist. This has been our experience too. We have experienced walking the dark valley and sitting at the table surrounded sometimes by our enemies, but we have also experienced the Lord's crook and the staff with which we are comforted and not defended or protected, just comforted by the presence of the Lord. What truly helps us understand this better is when we understand the position of the psalm in the listing of psalms. You see, Psalm 23 obviously follows Psalm, uh, the 22nd Psalm, which is uh, peculiarly the psalm of what we call the psalm of the cross. And do read Psalm 22. In Psalm 22, we read of no green pastures. There is no still water. It is only after we have read in Psalm 22 the words, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That we then come to Psalm 23, which says, The Lord is my shepherd. We must, by experience, know the value of blood shedding and see the sword awakened against the shepherd before we shall be able to truly know the sweetness of the good shepherd's care. The Psalm 23 ends with two hopeful claims. First, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Second, in the Lord's own house shall I dwell. The first claim when we read in the Hebrew is best translated as surely goodness and loving kindness shall pursue me. The confidence of the psalmist shines brightly even while being stalked by his enemies. The goodness and love of God do not simply follow me. Listen to this. The goodness and the love of God do not simply follow me, but they pers it pursues me. The love of God is relentless. This is blessed assurance. Yet it is that second line, the house of the Lord that I seek to dwell in all the days of my life. While the second claim often resonates loudest at funerals, its rightful interpretation is not to be translated as heaven. But if you look at Psalm 27 verse 4, will tell us that the house of the Lord is the, really the temple of Jerusalem. This is why Psalm 23 is principally a psalm of comfort for the living, as I said at the start of this explanation. It is a psalm for you and me who feel swamped by the world and the tragedies that have befallen us. 
In all of this, our relationship with the shepherd is unquestionable and in his care we entrust ourselves. Indeed, Psalm 23 essentially says that the best things about having the Lord as shepherd is having the Lord as shepherd. And so the best way I can end this uh, reflection with you is to read this beautiful psalm to you, but even more, pray this psalm with you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. I want to thank you for being with us on uh, this Sunday. I'm sending this out to you on Sunday. And I hope that each Sunday in Lent, um, you will also receive these uh, psalms, different psalms that I plan to do. Now, when you receive a good thing, as I always tell you, don't keep it to yourself. If you think this is a good thing and it has helped you to understand Psalm 23, then please send this out by WhatsApp to your friends uh, and all your relatives. Also, for those who are watching for the first time and you've realized that uh, in spite of my many times asking you uh, to subscribe, if you haven't subscribed, all you've got to do is just press that subscribe button and that bell icon and you will constantly get all our reflections. Thank you. God bless you. Have a blessed Sunday, everybody.